Hi, I'm Lauren Fisher. I've been a professional photographer since 1978, and I do mostly nature-based fine art photography now. And when I'm shooting, I'm always using a tripod, which is why I thought it'd be good to put this together. Um, when, I'm, when I'm doing workshops, people are always asking me about the use of tripods and, and why I use it so often. And so I just thought I'd talk about that a little bit. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is um, several things. Uh, why, why use a tripod? Uh, shooting with a tripod, different types of tripods, types of, of heads for the tripod and monopods and whatever else we come up with. So that's where we're going to start. So let's start off with why use a tripod. And the main reason that I use a tripod is it helps me make better photos. It's that simple. And that's what it really all comes down to. And so I'll tell you why. Many people think that when you go out in the dark is the time to use a tripod or when you need to use a long shutter speed, like this is a one second exposure uh, that I shot last week in Iceland. And in fact, all the photos you're gonna see tonight are from Iceland last week. So yes, the tripod helped keep my camera steady so I could do that long exposure. But what it really does is let me make a shot, take a, take a photo, review it, make any adjustments to my composition, and then shoot another one in pretty much the, the same, same place. So after reviewing this shot on my camera, I noticed that I need a little more space on the bottom and less on the top. So since I was using a tripod, it made it really easy to make that just a little bit of adjustment to lower the tripod a couple of inches, and suddenly I have a much cleaner composition. And that is very important to me to keep my images clean and free from distractions. So as you can see in this shot, now I have the bottom of the, of the water flowing down at the bottom and I don't have nearly as much sky, which didn't have any information in there that I wanted to add to it. So I'm rather fussy about my compositions. I'm constantly checking where the elements are in the photos. Excuse me. Things like where the house falls within the rule of thirds and I, I happen to love diagonals as a compositional element in my pictures and having a diagonal coming from the corner is something that I really love to try to achieve. And so using the tripod lets me slow down and really look at what's in my photo. So in this shot, the tripod helped me make sure I had the right amount of space to the right of the house and not crowd the mountain too much on the top. I needed on the top of the frame there. Wanted to have that little bit of space for the top of the mountain. If I'm hand holding, I can take a shot and then, then look at it on the back of the camera, but I can't get back into the exact same location. So I, once I review the shot, I can't get back to the exact same composition. And if I wanna make a minor adjustment, get back to it. By using a tripod, I can do that easily. So I'm, uh, constantly asked during workshops, do I need a tripod at this location? And my answer is always, I do. And they'll say, well, it's bright and sunny out, why do I need a tripod? Well, in a shot like this, if I'm hand holding, I just can't make sure the top of those three plants on the left aren't creeping out of the top of the frame. And that's very important to me, to keep that little bit of space there. So again, the tripod is letting me slow down, examine my composition, get my diagonals working whenever I can, and get everything in the photo that I want and eliminate what I don't want. And the eliminate what I don't want is extremely important to me. So when shooting with tripod, the key is to see the composition with your eye, then look through the camera. I don't pull up the camera on the tripod and then try to get the composition right because I can't have the tripod in the right spot. So while shooting this photo of a horse out in the field, the composition didn't quite look right. So I got down in a stream bed to get the angle I wanted. So I wanted to be low to make that horse look big in the, in the foreground and prominent. And so after I was down in the stream bed, down low, 
Then I got the tripod where I needed it to be to make the shot. And then I kept moving to find the best spot to make the photo. And then finally, it, came all, it all came together with the horse and the mount right where I wanted them. And I liked looking up at the horse, giving it that, to make it feel large, and then that mountain looming behind. If I was hand holding, I might get this shot, but I might not because I, I couldn't guarantee that I'd be in the right spot all the time. So don't get me wrong, there are times when you have to have the tripod to get a steady shot, and that's the main reason. So this is a 20 second exposure. You can't do this handheld. You, you have to have a tripod or everything is gonna be a blurry mess, right? And there are times when you need to jump out of the car and get a quick shot before it goes away. So this one's handheld. This is the only photo you'll see tonight that was handheld because that rainbow wasn't gonna last long. And, and also there are places where you just can't use a tripod. And because either they're banned or there's just not enough room or, or there's safety issues. So once in a while you do need to be handheld, but boy, I don't like shooting there. So many people use a tripod because they think it adds extra weight. I have a theory about that, which isn't at all scientific. Um, I think that if I'm standing around and waiting for the light, waiting for the right shot, or I'm moving just a little bit, then I'm actually carrying less weight throughout the day with the tripod than without. Reason being, if you aren't using a tripod, you are holding the weight of your camera and your lens all day. Right? You're, you're, you have it around your neck or over your shoulder or something, you're hanging onto that all day. When I'm using a tripod, the weight is sitting on the tripod so I can stand for hours without any extra weight on my body. So think about it when you're working a shot. If you're, you know, it makes a lot of sense that if you don't have all that weight on your body, you can stay out there longer. Now this might not work if you're hiking for a couple hours to get to a location, but you know, how often do many of us do that? Not real, at least not me. You know. The older I get, the less I, less I hike and the more I wanna save energy. So I also have this theory that it's very unlikely that the place that I'm standing is the best spot to shoot a picture, right? I mean, what are the odds that eye level you know, for me, I'm six foot two, eye level happens to be the best angle to shoot at. Sometimes it doesn't matter much. Sometimes it does. So I, I try not to set the tripod up, put the camera on it, look through it and make the composition. I wanna make the composition first, then see where the camera needs to be, then put the tripod, and then get the tripod to go into that spot. So, you know, I think about how often I see people making pictures without even looking to see if, or see what happens if they get a little bit lower or a little bit higher. You know, either we're all the perfect height, not likely, or we're too lazy to bend over or find a way to get higher. So I was sitting on my butt when I shot this one. And I have a tripod that goes up to seven feet high. I'm not nearly that tall, but there are times when I crank it up all, all the way, see how high I can get it. And then I use live preview to see what I'm doing. I can't look through the camera, but with the live preview, I can see what's going on, at least make a good composition that way. And so people who go on workshops with me often see me standing there with a tripod way over my head. And they're like, what are you doing? I say, well, that's the angle I need for this shot, or I want to take a look at anyway. Might not be right, but at least I want to take a look at it up there. And my tripod doesn't have a center column. So I can get really low when I need to. It will let me almost get flat to the ground. So uh, that way it's very versatile. I can, I can get super high, I can get super low, whatever I need to get in between. Okay, so let's just talk about some specific tripod styles. So tripods are either made of carbon fiber or aluminum. Carbon fiber is a lot more light, a lot lighter and a lot more expensive. So if weight is a concern, get out the credit card and get you a good carbon fiber one. You'll never be sorry. Uh, aluminum uh, is uh, 
weighs more and and uh, is less expensive. They're both uh, equally strong and and do a good job of supporting, but it's mainly a, a weight and money decision to make. But they do. There are two different kinds of mechanisms to lock the legs. So the picture that you're seeing has a twist lock. So that one you just turn it and then it tightens up the leg and you can control how tight you want the leg to become. Most uh, most high-end tripods are twist lock, and so that tends to be the 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 uh, best-selling type of lock right now and has been for a while. But you need to be careful when you use these and not unscrew it all the way and have the leg pop out. That's bad. And especially uh, if there's uh, some pieces falling out. So most tripods are built and they have two little pieces of plastic in there to keep the leg from sliding out. If you unscrew the, the twist lock all the way and the, the leg pops out, find those two little pieces of plastic. If you don't know how to put the tripod back together, you at least have the pieces of plastic so somebody can help you put it back together. If you don't have them, uh, you're going to have a problem in the future because then there's nothing to keep the leg from sliding out when you loosen it up properly. It'll just fall out. Not a big deal, but you have to stick it back in and then go. So if you do, if you do unscrew all the way, pull your leg out, find those two little pieces of plastic, you'll be, you'll be happier in the future. The other type of lock is uh, the lever lock. And so it just uh, clamps down essentially. So the, the problem with lever locks is they can loosen over time and you will need to tighten them and it always happens at the worst possible time, right? So you have to carry an Allen wrench with you or some kind of special, special little gizmo to tighten up the levers. Um, levers can be easier to open and close than twist lock. Um, some people find the twist easier, some find the levers easier. It, it kind of depends on uh, hand strength and size of your hand and, and things like that. And I prefer the twist lock. That's what I use on my tripod. Uh, once you have your tripod legs, then you need to have a head on the thing. That will let you move the camera around and, and position it where you want. And there's basically three types of heads. There's probably more, but th three is, is, is what I came up with. So the ball head is the most common one, and it, it essentially is just a ball and a mechanism to tighten it up so you can lock it down. Um, this is one made by Sure, and it's a, a pretty decent one, but they come in many sizes. And I always suggest people getting a ball head larger than uh, what they think they'll need. That way you make sure it doesn't droop under the weight of your camera and your lens. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they rate them by weight, you know, you'll see a tripod or a, or a head say it'll hold 24 pounds. It won't. Uh, so you just need to make sure that you have a head that's, that's strong enough to hold your camera and lens. So most heads have a quick release plate that you leave attached to your camera and then slide into the head. So the, the part on the top of this ball head that you see that has a little threaded screw, that screws into the head or into your camera and then when you want to put your camera on the head, you just slide it in and then tighten down the, the ball head. Um, Arca Swiss has become the standard. Uh, many, many manufacturers make uh, ball heads that are Arca style and uh, are Arca compatible. That way you can put any kind of uh, plate on anybody else's tripod or, or like that. Um, if you don't have Arca style, it, that's, they still work, but that, that has become the standard and, and uh, you don't have to worry about losing it in your plate and not having something that's they're, they're really re readily available. So another type of head is the pan and tilt head, which usually has two or three handles on it. And that each handle allows the camera to move in only one direction, either tilt sideways, up and down or uh, uh, around, panning around. So if you shoot video, you probably want to pan tilt head. It makes panning a lot easier and, and it makes keeping your, your camera level a lot easier also. And it's a smoother, uh, a smoother pan. Uh, very few, if any, 
video heads or ball heads that use the pan and tilt. But most still, but the most popular by far still head for still pictures is the ball head. Another type is a gimbal head. And so a gimbal is essentially built to balance your camera and lens. And it's used mainly for uh, long telephoto lenses. So it lets you balance the, the camera and, and quickly follow action and move it and, and move with the action. It's not very good for general use since you can only move the camera up and down or sideways. You, you, if you're not level, you can't get level. Or if you wanna like uh, shoot vertical instead of horizontal, unless you have a tripod collar on your lens, you can't tilt with it. So, so uh, a gimbal is not good at all for general use, but it's great for long, len long lens use and some other special things like panoramas. They're great for doing multiple shot panoramas. So tripods come in many sizes and I say go big. And because if your tripod is taller than you, it makes it really easy to shoot something upward. That way you don't need to squat down to look up, which can get very tiring. And I mentioned that my camera doesn't have, uh, or my tripod doesn't have a center column. So this is the tripod that I have. It's made by Sue Ray. Uh, they no longer sell that in the US. So they got sued by really right stuff uh, for uh, patent infringement because this tripod was as good as really right stuff's and cost a third as much. So they, they sued them and won, or sued them and, and Sue Ray backed off is what really happened. So not having the center column though, allows me to splay out the legs and then get down low. So my seven foot tall tripod, when the legs are extended, will go almost, well, it will go flat to the ground. So the only height is however tall my ball head and the camera are. Um, now some, some uh, tripods with columns in them uh, are made so that the column unscrews so you can get lower. Um, so you can take off, you can remove part of the, of the column. Uh, other ones are made so that they will, you can take the column out and you can place it in upside down so you can get your camera right down to the ground. The only bad thing is you're shooting upside down. Uh, so you're, you know, it's a little harder to remember where the controls are when everything's upside down. Uh, there are other ones that the column comes out and turns at a 45 degree angle. Uh, Manfrotto makes a, a good one like that, uh, or 90 degree angle, sorry. So it comes, it, it lifts up and then becomes uh, uh, like an arm sticking out, which is pretty cool too. Although when you're sticking out, you're becoming much less solid. So you'll notice that there are only three sections of legs on my tripod. And so that makes it a very, very solid tripod. Um, you know, it's, it's important that your tripod be solid. I mean, there, there's nothing worse than having a, a wobbly tripod. So I always suggest to people to do what I call the tripod wobble test, which is pretty simple. You just fully extend the legs of the tripod out, stick your index finger on it, and push a little bit. If you can wiggle that thing, you don't want it. You know, that's just bad. If you can make it wiggle with very little movement, with very little pressure, not good. You know, I, f I found this one on uh, Amazon and I, it, it's, it's, uh, it kind of makes me laugh because the weakest part of any tripod is the center column. So if you extend, this one has a, an extendable center column. If you extend that center column up, you're, uh, you're creating a, an extremely weak, uh, tripod. And, you know, from when I look at this, it seems like if a fly landed on that, it would start wobbling. So I'd be pretty, pretty careful with that. But it folds down small, which some people think is great, which it is. But I say stay away from the travel tripods. Yeah, they're small and easy and, and can travel. But I just don't understand why, uh, why anyone would go to some place that they'll probably never go to again, and take a tripod like this and leave their good tripod at home because 
then you get wobbly shots. Your shots are out of focus and you're never going back. You know, if you're going to use this, use it at home where you can shoot something again. But they are small and easy to try to, to shake or to small and easy to take with you. But you're going to get bad pictures. So what's the point? If you're whenever you're select, selecting any tripod, the weakest part is going to be the center column and the bottom section. So you can see this one has four or five sections. If that bottom section is about the size of a pencil, you know that's not going to be a solid tripod. You, know, you want that bottom section to be as big as it can be. That way you have the strongest tripod possible. So I, you know, I know that weight and hauling equipment is is tough. I, I carry a lot. But you know, photography takes some work, and part of the work is hauling equipment. So I take my big tripod with me everywhere. I, I, I mean, it, wherever I go, it goes. And I, I actually purchased a suitcase to fit the tripod, not the other way around. And just so you know, the TSA the, does allow tripods as carry-on on airplanes. So if you're worried about packing it, you can carry it on. They won't give you any grief about that. So another, another thing you can use is a monopod. Uh, they, have a, they have a purpose, but it's not to steady a camera during a long exposure. You know, I have one with feet on it. Uh, this is not one with feet, this is just a regular monopod, uh, but it won't, keep, it won't keep you steady either. In fact, I think that most of the time you're better off using nothing rather than a monopod or a travel tripod because if you're using a monopod, you're probably thinking that you're getting sharp pictures. And when you look at them on your screen on the back of your camera, you think, yeah, it looks pretty good. Then you get home and you put them in your computer and suddenly everything is just a little soft, a little bit blurry. And that's coming from camera motion. And camera movement is by far the biggest reason that most photos are out of focus. It's not because you focused in the wrong place or didn't have enough depth of field, it's camera shake. And so, uh, a monopod won't do a whole lot to eliminate camera shake. It, it'll do a little bit, but unless you're very skilled with it, you're better off using nothing. That way you know you're in, in a position to get some shake and you'll do other things to uh, alleviate the camera shake. So when you're using a tripod, if your camera has image, image stabilization or vibration reduction, Unless it's a, a fairly new lens, you want to turn that off because your vibration reduction or image stabilization, depending what company you have and what they call it, fights with the tripod over uh, who's in charge of, of shake. And so when you're using a tripod, turn off that image stabilization. When you're using a monopod, you might want to leave it on. My, my recommendation is do some tests before you shoot something important. See if, see if having the image stabilization while using a mon monopod helps. So where I use a monopod and where, where I think it's most feasible is when I'm using a big lens, a, a big telephoto lens, in a place where tripods aren't allowed or it's not safe to use one, like the sidelines of a football game. You know, there I don't want to be hand-holding a big lens the whole time, so I'll use the, tri the monopod mainly as a uh, support device so I don't have to hold that weight the whole time. Another option is to use a platypod. So this is just basically a, a chunk of aluminum that has uh, uh, the ability to put a ball head on it and uh, they have feet you can screw into it and you can use it in places where tripods are banned or just not practical. So they work great. Um, like I say, they have little legs you can screw into them, you can strap it to a post, you can do all kinds of things with this sucker and it's very versatile. Uh, and they're made in New Jersey. Uh, the large size is 100 bucks, and the smaller one sells for 59 bucks. Uh, you do have to add a, a uh, ball head to it, but I carry an extra uh, ball head with me, and I carry the platypod with me all the time, and, and it's amazing where, where I'll break it out. Um, so places like uh, Grand Central Terminal in New York, where you can't use a tripod, you get one of these out, and they won't say a word to you. You can set it anywhere, and stand in the middle of the place and get up on a balcony wherever they won't say a word to you because you don't have you're not using a tripod but you're getting the same same effect 
The bad part is if you want it to be four feet in the air in the middle of the terminal, you can't do that. But they're, they're a, great, uh, a great way to uh, steady yourself when, when you just can't use a tripod. So, uh, you know, for me, a tripod is, is an investment. And it's an investment that, if you get a good one, can last you for the rest of your life. Um, you know, I, I highly recommend people get a carbon, carbon fiber, and you have to figure you're going to pay at least $250 for the legs and up to 1000 or more, depending on how big of one you want to get. And you're going to pay another 150 to 400 for a good ball head. If you pay less, I guarantee you, you're going to buy another one every couple of years. And in the long run, you're going to spend more money if you bought a good one from the start. So uh, these are five companies that make pretty darn good tripods. Uh, really right stuff is uh, the best. And especially their heads. Their ball heads are, are tremendous. Uh, and they're extremely expensive. <laughs> so you can... You can easily pay $1,200 for a set of legs and, and $500 for their best ball head. Uh, that's a lot of money, I know. Uh, Gitzo is also a very good uh, tripod company. Um, Gitzo is actually owned by Manfrotto now, uh, but, they, but the, the Gitzo line is their higher end. And again, you're gonna, you're gonna pay a lot of money. Suray is uh, fairly new on the market um, uh, in the last eight, 10 years. Uh, they are uh, a, 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 they make a pretty good product at a very low price. Um, I have several Suray tripods, and and I know lots of people who have purchased them, and and they they make a good product. Um, I don't like uh, some of their business practices, but that's on the side. And and uh, and if you're uh, if you're a political activist, you may know that really right stuff is. Uh, not liked by a lot of people also for their political views on uh, some things, uh, but uh, you know, that's business. But uh, Sue Ray also makes very good ball heads and, and uh, they're much, much less expensive than really right stuff. So if, if you're really looking to uh, not spend a ton of money, take a look at the Surrey line. They have lots of options, uh, but again, stay away from, from the, uh, uh, travel tripods. Uh, Benro makes some good tripods and they make some real crap ones. Uh, please don't buy their travel tripod. I, I can tell you it will just fall apart on you faster than you can imagine. Uh, their, little, their little tripods look nice, but the feet come off, the, 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 they fall apart, you unscrew the, you know, they're, they're just not, they're cheap. Let's just call it that way. They're just cheap. I hope they don't watch. Um, uh, but their higher end, their, their top of the line ones are, are really nice. I'm not a huge fan of their ball heads. Um, you know, all, all of these companies, probably, I'm saying that without, yeah, all these companies will sell a, a tripod and ball head uh, combo. So uh, you can buy it that way so you don't have to think about it. You know, they put the right size ball head on the right, on the whatever size legs you're getting. But uh, you know it's just as easy to to get uh, your own legs and and match it up with uh, with whatever ball head you need. Uh, Manfrotto makes very good products. Uh, I have I have some of their tripods uh, had for 25 years, and they're not carbon fiber because I didn't make carbon fiber 25 years ago, or at least I couldn't afford it. But um, they they make good solid products. Watch out for their ball heads though and all of their heads, they don't go with the Arca Swiss uh, style. They have their own style. So if you get a Manfrotto tripod and you want to borrow a friend's tripod, your plate's not going to fit and, and it's, not going to, it's not going to work right. Their plates are good, but they're just not, uh, they, they, haven't, they haven't gone with the industry standard. They are now making some converters for their tripods to convert to, or for their heads to convert to Arca Swiss, but uh, uh, the only down thing on Manfrotto is if if you want to be in the Arca Swiss party, you're not going to get it from them usually. So 
what it really comes down to is just making sure you're solid. You know, you just want to be solid when you're shooting your shots. And, you know, if you're, if you're only making them big enough to view on online or you're making prints to hang on the wall, it makes a huge difference whether you use a tripod or not. Uh, and also it lets you just take the time to really see what you're shooting and what's there and what's not there. You know, that's for me, the key to it is just uh, really slow down a little bit. Think about what's, what you're shooting. Think about what you're trying to get in the picture and then get your tripod to help you with that. And you know you can hit them. You can hit them once in a while with uh, handheld, but you'll you'll get more more keepers by using a tripod. So before I take some questions, I want to tell you about a special deal I've got working here. Uh, I have a Labor Day sale going on on my annual fall foliage workshop. It's usually sold out by now, but for some reason I still have some openings. So uh, I host it from my ho my house here in Woodstock, Vermont, and I provide transportation during the workshop. So if you can get to Woodstock, I'll take you to some great locations and we'll shoot uh, some of Vermont's uh, famous fall foliage. So through Monday, only 950 bucks for the workshop, which is a savings of about 300 bucks. So it's October 7 to 11 here in, in Vermont. And so uh, that's about it. So follow me on Instagram, pound for Lauren photos. If you don't have a, uh, if you don't follow me already. And uh, any questions? Anybody have any questions? You know, I can't see the, let me see if I can find the, anybody have any uh, chat? There's some chat. Let me see if I can see any chat. Any chat messages? Okay. So any questions, any thoughts? Can anybody still hear me? Dawn, you say yes, you can still hear me? Okay, good. I see in the chat that some people weren't hearing me, so good, good. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? Uh, Lauren, can you hear me? This is Gil. Yes. yes. Uh, you want to, uh, I asked you a question last week about the Al Brackets. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yes. Um, uh, an, an L bracket, I, I, I could have mentioned that. Yes, thanks for asking, Gil. Uh, an L bracket is essentially a, a piece of metal, L-shaped, that you put on your camera, and it has uh, the Arca Swiss standard on it, and it lets you easily switch from horizontal to vertical. And the advantage to that is when you screw a, a plate in your camera and then you go vertical, Sometimes it will it will loosen, it will unscrew, and then your camera droops down. If you use a an L bracket, it is solid all the time because it's it's you're always shooting with the L uh, with with the solid, and so every camera has so they make different L brackets for every camera because of the openings in the camera that you need to access. And if you just had a, a solid chunk of metal wrapped around it, you couldn't, you couldn't get in to plug in your uh, remote cord or something like that. So you need to get an L bracket that, that matches your camera. And there are several companies that make them. Uh, really right stuff makes them, of course, they're the most expensive. Uh, I like uh, Kirk Enterprises. Uh, K-I-R-K -K is Kirk. Um, and um, uh, who else? Uh, lots, lots of companies make L brackets, but you just want to make sure you get an L bracket, and it'll cost you 100 to 125 bucks. You know, uh, that that matches your camera, and and they are extremely handy. So I can flip from horizontal to vertical in in a second or two, um, because I also use a really right stuff ball head that has a clamp lever to close it up, so I don't have to screw it. So I can just unclamp it, flip it up. Slap, slap it from horizontal to vertical, clamp it back down, and, and I'm, I'm back in business. Does that make sense? So look, look up L brackets, and, and you'll see. And they are, I know. Uh, first thing I buy when I buy a new camera is I buy a, 
a uh, an L bracket to go with it. Three-legged thing, yeah, that's another company that makes L brackets. Wayne just put that up. Um, uh, so a question, why do you own multiple tripods? Because I'm a nut. Um, I, I mainly use my, my big Sure tripod. That's my number one. Uh, but there are lots of times when I'm shooting multiple cameras. So I'll have multiple tripods for multiple cameras. Um, I've, I've tried getting some smaller tripods to use for things. Uh, Sure makes a waterproof one. So you can, you can stick it in the ocean and the legs don't fill up with water. Um, uh, I just, you know, I just fill mine up and then just take the ends off and let it drain back out. It doesn't, doesn't make a big difference. Um, so, uh, generally you really only need one tripod. There's, there's no reason to have multiple ones. Uh, do I use live view to focus and at what point do you focus? I don't know what the, what point means. Uh, um, in general, no, unless, if I can look through the camera, I'm going to look through the camera. Um, uh, I, I use live focus when, when I either have the camera down on the ground and, I, and I'm too old to get my lazy butt down, clear down to the ground to, to look through the, you know, I can't get down there to look through the viewfinder anymore, or I'm, I'm high overhead or something like that. So uh, in general, you know, most of the time I'm not using live view to, to focus, but when, when the camera is not in a place where I can look through the viewfinder, then I'm popping on the live focus. Um, so somebody also says they're using a Leo photo L bracket. Uh, I'm not familiar with them, but it's, they say it's uh, solid and fraction of the cost. So, I mean, they're all just made out of aluminum, so there's not much difference in them as long as they have the holes in the right spots. Uh, does re L bracket require specific area plate? Not sure what you mean by area plate. Um, but you do need a specific L bracket for your camera. And so it just screws in the tripod hole on the bottom of the camera, uh, just like the, uh, any other plate would. So, uh, you know, once, once you put an L bracket on, you'll, you'll never need to take it off. Uh, you know, the other thing, some of them, if you, if you, you can buy a generic one that'll fit on any camera, but it'll cover up things like your battery cover. So you have to take the L bracket off to change batteries. Well, that's not very practical. So one specifically um, uh, will uh, make room for the battery. Um, are your photography trips appropriate for someone? Yes, I haven't even read what you're gonna say next. That's not ready to independently shoot in manual mode. Absolutely. Uh, I get people uh, on trips who shoot with iPods. I had a woman uh, who uh, went to Italy with me and she got there two days early and bought a camera there and I had to show her how to open the box. Um, she, she, uh, you know, she didn't know a thing and, and that happens quite a bit. So no, you don't have to be able to shoot manual. Um, that's, that's all part of the learning process is being in fun places and shooting. Uh, Area plus L bracket. I just, I, sorry, Kathleen. I just don't know what an area. What you mean by area bracket? Um, any recommendations for a good brick and mortar shop? I want to be able to take my camera into the store and try stuff out. Where are you? Where are you at, Lulu? It depends where you are. Uh, so okay. Um, Arca plus L bracket. Yeah. So almost all L brackets and maybe all of them are, um, all L brackets are, are follow the Arca Swiss uh, style of, of uh, heads. So, um, so yes, th they're all compatible with Arca Swiss. So an L bracket probably will not be compatible with a Manfrotto tripod head. So that's another reason to uh, go with an Arca type head. Uh, so Lulu's in Central Jersey, camera stores. Uh, unique photo up in Fairfield is good, uh, or you have to go into the great big city and B&H is, is the uh, mecca for, for gear heads, for camera equipment. Uh, uh, so B&H or, uh, uh, like I say, in, in New Jersey, uh, there's nothing nearby. Uh, there's a little store in downtown New Brunswick. They have some stuff, but not a lot. So you'll have to go up to Unique Photo in Fairfield, North Jersey, or uh, all the way into the city. 
And thanks, Don, for uh, uh, the testimonial on shooting. Uh, Don went with me to Italy earlier this year, and uh, she was a lot of fun. So it was great to have her on that. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks for joining me tonight. And if you have any questions at any point, you can drop me an email. Thank you, everybody. And I'm glad you were online with me. Talk to you soon. <laughs>